let's welcome to the stage now Assemblymember Vince Fong. Jesse. In 2016, Vince Fong was elected to the California State Assembly. He currently represents the 32nd Assembly District, encompassing Kern and Tulare counties. Uh, he has been a strong advocate for businesses. Uh, and he's also been in a, a leading on domestic energy production issues and uh, promoting a safe, clean California energy. He's also been involved with the supply, supply chain crisis uh, and has consistently advocated to improve California's water infrastructure. So some of the top topics on our uh, docket here. And just to kick things off, I just wanted to ask what has stood out for you most this legislative session? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things that stand out this legislative session, but first and foremost, I think the biggest thing is just the new members. Um, so for those of you who haven't followed the legislature, uh, we have 24 new assembly members, uh, 10 new state senators. Um, so out of 120 of us, you got 34 new members of the legislature. Never been elected before, at least to the state body. Um, they probably have a whole host of experiences from like local government and and you know, uh, from labor and from small business uh, backgrounds. But just imagine in your workforce, your organizations, imagine 30% of your employees are all brand new and trying to get them up to speed on you know, whatever you're trying to get them to do. Well, we have that same dynamic. And so imagine all the issues that, uh, that Brad mentioned, supply chain, water, uh, budget, um, you know, franchise law, you know, I mean, you, you name it, labor laws, everything else. A lot of them have never voted on those uh, topics before, or those issues before. So getting them uh, up to speed on those topics uh, and those issues and those bills uh, has been a challenge. And again, it's like, the legislature, in if a lack of better description, is kind of like high school, right? You know, we all we're all relationship driven. It's all you know what who what makes each other tick. We're trying to get to know each of these new members. Um, you know, there's some clicks that that form. And remember, you have freshman class that's 24. Uh, so the, I mean, they they are a huge block now that we have to deal with. So you 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 layer this brand new chaotic environment. Um, of new members on top of all the challenges we're trying to deal with. And from a f floods in the Central Valley, water infrastructure, budget, now we have a budget deficit of 32 billion. We had a surplus of 100 billion last year. Um, uh, you know, you layer in homelessness, public safety, supply chain challenges. I mean, all of the things that were crises before that never went away, now you've layered that a whole level of uncertainty. So for me, that's probably the, for most members, that's probably the, the, the biggest challenge is <clears throat> trying to get to know all these new members of the legislature and try to f find some common ground with them. And, uh, you know, getting back to the agricultural issues here, one of the things that mentioned uh, starting off is that you've been very involved in advocating for more water infrastructure, uh, specifically above ground storage. Uh, we have a lot of action going towards streamlining permits uh, lately, streamlining infrastructure projects in general. Uh, later today, you're going to jump into a committee hearing on uh, the, bu the governor's uh, budget proposals for transportation uh, infrastructure. So I wanted to kind of get your thoughts here on are we doing enough to streamline uh, permitting for infrastructure? Uh, what else can we, we be done, can be done and what, what kind of progress have we made? That's what we call a softball question. Uh, uh, I, I, look, we, we don't streamline enough. We don't invest enough in water infrastructure. Um, you know, when it comes to like now flood protection, like water storage and, and water infrastructure is flood protection. And I think a lot of times when we have this debate now, everyone's supportive of flood protection. Like with, uh, and of course, we need to modernize our levees and, 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 and the canals. But you know, the way I, I've simplified it to some of my members in the legislature is that we've got a, we need more buckets of water. Our buckets are currently full. We need more buckets of water uh, to, to, for the water that's coming. And we need more straws to get them into the buckets. Uh, and, and the straw's got to be bigger. And so this is like, I mean, it's very simplistic, but I mean, this is what we're dealing with. I mean, seven years on the budget committee, we haven't invested an additional dollar above what the, what the, prop, uh, the, prop, the water bond was. Uh, I think that's not enough. Again, we were $100 billion in, in surplus last year. You know, that was our opportunity, and, and, and now we're in deficit. But even though we're in deficit, it doesn't mean we're short revenue in California. Like, so... You go back 10, 15 years, the state budget of California was probably roughly 100 to $120 billion. 
And the governor's budget proposal recent, uh, that just came out in, in uh, May was $307 billion. So it's almost tripled. Well, actually, it is tripled. So you're telling me that in the time it went from 100 to $300 billion, we couldn't have, we, 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 there was no money to invest in water infrastructure? There was no money to invest to finish sites, to, to, to do the Frank Kern Canal fix, to, to improve the, 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 um, um, the, uh, the, the Mendota Delta Canal. I mean, there's so many things that we could have done in that time frame. So the way I see a water policy in California right now, at least from the, in terms of water operations, is that we got to move the water when we get it. So we had a bunch of water uh, during the atmospheric, atmospheric river times. Um, we, sh we should have, you know, we, the, I think DWR, when I, walk, when I worked with them, they moved as much as they could. But then, um, but then we have all this water now that we, we, could, we, could, we could be storing. So we gotta, store, we gotta build that infrastructure uh, and we gotta build it as fast as possible. So we have to streamline that process. Um, you know, we are going into a, uh, we are going into uh, an infrastructure streamlining uh, uh, hearing, but you know, NEPA, CEQA, you know, a lot of it doesn't, I mean, they're, they're not exactly there for water infrastructure projects. They're for, there for public transit, they're there for a lot of these other projects, but is it specific, can it be specifically used for water infrastructure? My, I hope, my hope is it will be, but we have to, we have to get, um, we have to get that part into the conversation, and, and I think that is what, you know, we need to highlight and what's missing in the, in the conversation. You know, so as we talk about water, you know, let's not lose focus that next year we could be in a drought year. And people are telling me it's going to be a bit wet year, but I've heard that before, right? So, you know, shame on us if next year we are in a drought situation after the, the, the extensive water year that we had this year. And I think that's also the education that a lot of you need to provide to the average Californian is that we're not out of the woods. We're not, I mean, we could be in a, a, a dire water year next year just because we had a wet year. And so that's just the, the ups and downs of water. Being in a legislature that's dominated by Democrats uh, and a, as a Republican, is it hard to get that message across? I mean, it's certainly a challenge. I would say when it comes to water, wa water's not like a, a partisan issue. It's, it's a regional issue. It's, it's in, in, and it divides different regions. So it divides the Central Valley in terms of Northern, Northern Central Valley, Southern Central Valley. Uh, it divides the urban areas and the rural areas. And so I mean, the, the education process is critically important. As I mentioned before, you got a lot of new members, right? So a lot of them probably haven't gotten into the weeds about how our water flows uh, and, and gets delivered uh, throughout California. And so I think there is an opportunity there, but I mean, it's, you know, what it's a saying, you know, what's it, what's it whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting? Well, we're in a fight. I mean, this is, uh, this is one of those real challenges where, you know, we talk, we're going to talk about hopefully some of the bills that are moving through um, when it comes to the, the water rights system and, and, and its implications to the 1914 senior water rights and what it means to water delivery and property rights and, and, and whatnot. I mean, these are real world consequences these, th th that these bills will have. These aren't academic exercises. But a lot of times, people treat them as academic exercises. Like, oh, you know, well, the, the phrase cleanup language did not exist in my vernacular eight years ago before I got elected, right? So a lot of times they're like, oh, just, we'll just pass it, and then if there's any problems with it, we'll clean it up later. Well, that's not how, I mean, something as, as, as consequential as these bills moving through, I mean, you don't want to see the consequences of these bills because the, the impact not only to my community but communities throughout California, and that's the other, I mean, that's one of our bigger challenges is, is trying to explain to urban legislators. You know, for us in the Central Valley, you know, we live and breathe water um, just because it's part, of our, uh, it's, it's part of our economic lifeblood. But you know, to talk to someone in San Francisco, to talk to someone in LA, to talk to someone in San Diego and explain to them why water policy is critically important to them um, is, it has its own unique challenges. So we have a, at least three bills that are um, kind of, kind of in, in different ways reforming the water rights system. We're talking about giving the state water board more enforcement uh, authority, raising fines, uh, investigating pre-1914 rights more. 
Um, you've been very involved with these. What do you think is the success of these bills passing this year? Uh, uncertain at the moment. I mean, we, we tried to stop them in the assembly before the House of Origin deadline. Um, it is very difficult to stop bills it, during halftime. I, mean, I refer to it as halftime because it's going over to the next house. Uh, courtesy votes are very difficult to stop. Uh, again, another phrase that didn't exist in my vernacular until eight, uh, eight years ago is this idea of like, well, I know my bill is not ready. I know my bill is kind of bad, but like give me the courtesy of uh, passing this out to the next house. Give me time to work on it. My personal view of, of that type of uh, voting behavior is I did not get elected to loan my vote to a senator, to, to, to hope that that senator will fix my problem, right? I can only vote for the bill in front of me. So if you are gonna take amendments or you're gonna try to fix the bill, then fix it before I vote for it. Uh, now there are some members that I probably uh, have a better working relationship with that may be able to have more trust in, in maybe trying to uh, address those issues. In this situation, I'm not so sure. Both of these, legis uh, many of these legis legislators haven't really been in the water space before, and they don't, they don't have, I, in my opinion, an experience of advocating for the Central Valley. And so, uh, now I, I, of course, elected the Central Valley. This is my, 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 uh, where I'm advocating from. But the implications, as I mentioned before, is, is pretty extensive. So the fact that you're going to like, prevent private investment in water storage, the idea of like empowering the state water board, which is unelected, and has, you know, you're going to give them more power over the water system in California where they we already have a chaotic system. We don't need that. And, you know, and, and you want, we, I would always prefer the state water, I mean, if I could, I would, king for a day, I'd probably make the state water board elected. But, you know, we have a system right now where you've got so much uncertainty in the water space, and then you're empowering a state water board that we have no um, control over to be able to give them the ability to find, the ability to take away water rights, <clears throat> to undo um, 1914 rights. <clears throat> that's just, I don't think that's the right approach. And, and then of course, everyone will say, well, well, you're the legislature, you have the power uh, the power of the purse to oversee the state water board. Well, I would love to zero out some programs in the state budget, uh, especially rein in uh, the state water board and CARB and a lot of other agencies in state California, but I need a dance partner on the other side of the aisle. So if all of you are willing to loan your power to the state water board, well, have at it. But I know the, I know the outcome of the story and it doesn't end well. And so this is the thing, if we're going to, um, control our own destiny, then we are going to have to really exercise uh, our, our advocacy. And look, the other side is playing for keeps. And so, you know, we the, understand they're throwing sharp elbows, and we have to understand that this is a full contact sport, and we have to ensure that our, our voices and our positions are, are, um, are being heard, because these bills, in my opinion, are existential threats to our water system in California. And I don't sugarcoat it. Like this is this is a big deal. Is, as, as to quote Joe Biden, this is a big effing deal, and and we have to we have to treat it as such. You are also the budget vice chair. Uh, certainly, a lot of stuff going on uh, in that area this year. We have, we're approaching a deadline in a couple of weeks here. Can you give us a little update on how those discussions are going right now, and what we can expect to see for some of the battles ahead throughout the summer? So. I was asked this, I actually just did a podcast and I was asked this question and you know, my seven years in the legislature, I, I truly do believe that the budget process in California is completely broken. Um, there's no transparency. A lot of these conversations right now that are happening on, on all of these uh, negotiations are all behind the scenes. Uh, right now there's a, a, the assembly and the Senate Democrats are negotiating um, they would love to have the governor involved to have a three-party agreement uh, by June 15th. Uh, I don't think that's gonna happen. So the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. I think there's going to be uh, kind of a legislative Democrat proposal framework passed by June 15th so that we meet, well, we, that the legislature meets the deadline. I don't believe that budget's real. I think the governor that will, will then engage after the fact and try to get the real three-party agreement done by June 30th, which has essentially become the real deadline. Um, 
you know, all that being said, you know, you've all probably taken your civics classes in, in high school. Um, you know, if the Senate and the Assembly don't agree, in, 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 on, on paper, there's supposed to be a budget conference committee. Members elected on, on both sides to go and, and kind of hash out the differences, and that would become the legislative proposal. The, the leadership on the Democratic side in, in the legislature, they don't want a budget committee. A budget conference committee. They want to be able to hash that out on their own and then and bring it to the floor any time. Um, so that's the challenge. And the, the wrinkle in all of this is not only do we have a $32 billion deficit, we have deficits moving into the future. So if you read the, the recent report by the LAO, the, the Independent Legislative Analyst Office, you know, he's warned us, don't pass a budget with structural deficits into the future. And so what the governor has done is he's taken all the money from next year and the year after that, and he's front-loaded it into this year to, to support his unsustainable budget. <clears throat> so there's two, there's two sides of the coin when it comes to the budget. <clears throat> yes, we have a deficit. We are spending more than we're bringing in, and that's because the economy is cooling off very, very significantly. But it doesn't mean that the state of California is short revenue. As I said before, the budget that the governor's proposed is $307 billion. So what are we investing in? What are we, are we adequately uh, allocating those resources to the right things? And when it comes to water, I mean, there's clear misplaced priorities. You know, the fact that we're gonna, we're gonna spend $4 billion on the high-speed rail, and some of you may like that project, but $4 billion over uh, for a high-speed rail system that won't work versus flood management, water storage, you know, it seems to be a no-brainer to me. All right, unfortunately, that's, uh, we just hit time for this. Um, so I appreciate it very much for you taking the time to away from the floor session right now, by the way, to be with us here. And uh, let's give uh, Assemblymember Fong a nice round of applause.